You ready? Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Judith um, Johnson Hostler. My husband and I um, are part of the Marriage Power Team here with the um, Directors of uh, Member Services. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over um, talking about our marriage ministry here at Victoria's Praise. And what Pastor Will did um, a few years ago, I think it's been about four years now, he, um, as he grew in his ministry um, to other um, positions, he felt like there needed to be a marriage power team in place. So that marriage power team um, includes uh, five couples, so it's ten of us. Um, they participate in whatever boot camps we do, and I'll explain what the boot camps are a little bit later on. And But we're of different um, generations, so you have uh, the baby boomers, uh, Generation Y, Millennials, and that's because in your ministry, you should have, you know, other generations in your ministry. If, if all you have in your ministry is baby boomers, that's a church that at some point, if you don't bring young people in, that church will, you know, like we've seen a lot of churches leave because there's no youth coming forward. So we make sure that um, we're able to speak to different um, generations that attend our boot camps. And so today we're going to go over the five divine connections of marriage. And I have these books in my hand because this will be a sec. This section is what my husband and I cover in our boot camp. And then I'll have uh, Deacon Owens and Deaconess Owens. They're going to cover the spiritual connections. So every year, over 2.1 million couples get married. And the next year, there's a million that um, are divorced. Now, we often hear that in Christian marriages that that is even higher. But if you look at the research, you know, research um, is looking at different things. So you have to see where that research comes from. Is it a valid resource? Um, have, um, you know, what, what um, information has went into it? What categories? But we can say that marriage is, divorce is high in the Christian, um, in the, in the, in the Christian faith. And so what um, is important, do you have marriage ministries in your, um, okay, and what are some of the things that you do like throughout the year with the couples? Well, I'm not in charge of it, but mm -hmm. we do have it. Mm -hmm. Do you know some of the things that they do? Uh, well, they do a lot of outings, couple outings. Um, they do a lot of like Valentine's Day events, Christmas events. Um, it's, it's just a lot they do do. Which is beneficial to us, but right now I have been going to a My husband's not in church, but that's a prayer, so they do do a lot. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? in your churches so if you don't have them in your church kind of um look see if you can take some of this information and take it back to your church just glean from what we talk about here today and um if there if you don't have them like what are the barriers how could it benefit your ministry to have a um, marriage ministry so um National Marriage Month, which is February, but there's now a new um, celebration in March for black marriages, particularly because the divorce rate is so impacted by African Americans. But we do vow renewals. Like we turn our church into a wedding. We do that. We renew our vows yearly. Um, and it's really a special event. I think couples look forward to that. Um, last year, we were very fortunate to actually have a marriage. Someone got married in the church on the Sunday morning service as part of, it just kind of felt that way and they wanted to do it. So the church, our morning worship service was a wedding uh, and the pastor um, sermon was connected to that and more linked into the vows as they stood there. It was very powerful. Um, we do workshops throughout like we meet, we have virtual meetings once a month. It's always a challenge because people have to prioritize their marriage, and, and that's really hard when they're raising kids and everything. But we, we've been trying this year kicking off once a month um, workshop that focuses similar to yours, particularly like your, your friends. Um, you know, you 
hitting on areas that they would pride out and struggle with communication mm -hmm. and then spiritual connection and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then of course the elements. Thank you. That I, I, ne I never heard of um, that February is National Married Month and National Black Month. We do a big thing in February here, but that is, that's why it's important that we glean from each other. Because our marriages, we know, like even as we get saved, once you get saved, you know you at war, right? And so once you get married, the same thing. And then you come for your children and will come for your marriage. And so we have to have the knowledge to be able to do God's word, what he says about marriage. And so um, the ministry of marriage. So uh, Genesis 2, 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Ministry to help each other. The ministry for um, to help uh, with assignments with each other. And the ministry with each other. And that means helping others. So your marriage and the children fall under that other. You know, it's, it's when you're on the plane, I know when you first have your first child, you're on the plane with them, and the, and the um, airline stewardess said, if the plane goes down, put the mask on yourself first. And your first thought, if you're a new mother, oh, I'm going to put it on my child first. But we know we have to take care of that marriage first in order for us to do what we need to do Amen. in our families Amen. and in our ministry and in our communities. Amen. And so I'm going to kind of, because I know that we don't have a lot of time, but I want to make sure that we cover all of the information. So when we look at the conflict in marriage, when, you, when we, we do when we do our um, boot camp, what we do is we send out homework and we ask people, like, what are some of the areas that they're really struggling with? And it's always communication, it's conflict, and um, Deacon is, um, Owens, they're going to talk about the different areas um, of, of some things they learned from our books, from Pastor Will and books, and um, so they'll address that. But the conflict is huge and and many times we're we struggle with like um identifying exactly what it is or how we can get better and how we can talk about it and how we can because i've had couples that come well they're like oh our, our marriage is good well if i'm driving a car that means i got to change that oil in the car i have to change the tires from time to time i don't wait till I see it smoking to do something <laughs> different. So it's the same with our marriage. We need to pour into those marriages from the beginning. From when we say I do, there's work to be done. And so um, in the conflict, um, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold and perish, thought it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So now if God says we become one, we, we become one. I mean, when you think of one, one, when you think of, um, was it welding? You put me, something becomes one by the fire that comes up in the welding. So this is the same is true with couples. As we work through things, we become stronger and are able to become that one. So the divine connections, we cover spiritual connections, physical connections, emotional, the love connection, and the sexual connection. We won't be able to cover them all today because we have a certain amount of time, but in our boot camps, we do um, one or two day boot camps. Um, we go through each book or we might focus on, uh, we might focus on um, intimacy at one particular conference. Um, we do retreats and in the retreat, we might focus on one area. Um, we do uh, things throughout the year. We make sure that we have Valentine's Day, we have a, um, com the last couple of years, we've had a comedy show three years in a row and um, have spoken word and just have people coming and minister in different ways. So overcoming the insanity of drama in a relationship. So I'm gonna um, bring Leandris and Sonia up. They're gonna talk about the spiritual connection. So good morning, everybody. Everyone, um, my name is Sonya Owens, and we have actually been in the church now, going on four years. We are um, twenty-seven and some change, married, um, four children, and I want to talk about my wife. How did I get here? And 
why I stay. So, you know, of course, life happens and after marriage and not coming into the marriage with your own issues and, you know, not knowing how that affects everything, you know, broken and then adding children to the mix and things of that nature. Um, we found ourselves not liking each other. Well, okay, maybe I can speak for myself. I found myself not liking yeah, my husband. Yeah, because I always liked you. Okay, so I found myself not liking my husband. Um, and, you know, the bickering, the back and forth, not agreeing, couldn't agree on anything. So eventually, I left. I, I left the home. Um, he got to the point where, you know, you know, you hear, just can't take it anymore. Since I did not know how to handle conflict, I didn't know how, I didn't have any tools or anything. I didn't have anything to pull from, you know, my mother, my father. That wasn't, even though they stayed married until my father passed, but, you know, my father was an alcoholic. So I, I didn't have the best example. A lot of my siblings, either they were married, divorced, or it wasn't the best marriage. It was a Christian marriage. So I found myself no longer in the home. Um, and didn't know if I was coming back, didn't know if I wanted to come back. I knew I wanted to be married, but I didn't want the marriage that I had. Um, so one day my husband called me and said, hey, my brother's found this church, I'm a pastor. This after she left. <laughs> Go ahead on. Right. I, at that point, I hadn't been gone. Maybe about two weeks. Um, and he said, you know, would you come and sit down and talk to them? Um, this pastor, he has a powerful marriage ministry that he thinks he could help us. Um, and I remember saying, Lord, this is it. This is my last ditch. You know, either you, you, I'm going to get what I need or I don't know. I, I'm not, I didn't say I didn't want, I wasn't going to leave the marriage. But I, um, so I came. Um, and that first day, I just remember Pastor ministering to us, and you know, I broke down in tears because I was thrown with lifeline. Even though Pastor was speaking, but I heard the spirit behind him, I heard the voice behind him, and at that point, I had hope because all my hope was gone, it was pretty much gone. So from then on, we came to everything that they had talk about marriage, the boot camps. I know. Um, and it was the tools and the teaching from the pulpit, from the boot camps, from the one-on-one -on -one sessions that brought us to him. So I tell people that this actually saves our marriage. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 That was good, Swan. That was really good. So overcoming the drama of insanity. This was uh, when we first got here. This actually was what Pastor was preaching on. Uh, no more drama relationships. No more drama relationships. And uh, it was so ironic because that's exactly what we was going to. So my wife was talking about um, the conflict. And one of the things that we learned that when we was here um, were the principles that Pastor Nichols was teaching on. And it was the principles that caught my attention. So instead of me focusing on the relationship and attacking her, uh, we ended up learning that one of the principles is thou shalt not attack the person but the problem. That's a basic principle, okay? So your wife is not doing something that you want her to do. Your husband is not doing something what you want, what, what you want them to do. And naturally, we go to them and we complain to them about it. Complaining is attacking. So what we've learned to do is we've taken small principles like that, and instead of me attacking her, I recognize and identify the problem, and I put my energy towards that. That right there would save any marriage that will make your, your marriage at least 50% better because the attacks causes conflict. And if this is happening every day and every week, what happens is the conflict is eventually poisoning the marriage. It's causing a division, and the, and the division is getting wider and wider and wider. And the poison is destroying the relationship. James talks about the tongue being a world of... Uh, a, 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 James talks about the, the tongue being poison. It's a world of iniquity. So what happens is when we react to one another and we keep this conflict just keeps coming back and forth, we actually invite and open up the gates of hell where unclean spirits come in and they attack our marriage immediately, like right then. Mm -hmm. So one moment you're happy, the next minute you said the wrong thing, and then all of a sudden these spirits come in, they attack the marriage, and you're like, what just happened? 
you know, we just got out of the bed. What, what just happened? So this is one of the things that really got my attention. It was the principles. So I have learned how, we have learned how to uh, focus on the principles and not the problem. One of the principles that got our attention was a failure to care and a failure to protect. Mm -hmm. You want to get a minute on that? You said a minute to the youth? Yeah, it, it, it did because we always blaming the other person. You know, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Never. I thought most of it was her fault. Right. I actually did. And I actually thought most of it was his fault. Yeah. Right, not realizing that both parties have parts that they play in it. So, and what I learned through the teaching and, and sitting in the sessions with pastor, the, the counseling session with pastor is to take my eyes off of him. Focus on you and, and look at what you are doing or not doing that may be contributing to the issue at hand. And once you recognize it and realize it, you know, own it, accept it, and then come up with some solution base. You know, how can we, how can it make work for both of us? Let me interject right there. So this is how failure to care and failure to protect work. It's another principle. It's real simple. So my wife told me that once she saw this principle, she realized that when she was not supplying my needs, she realized for the first time that that was a failure to care. So if I work all day long and I come home and my wife didn't cook for me, in my heart, in my mind, that's telling me that my wife don't care about me, okay? So what we normally do, we come in the house and we argue and fuss about, we attack, okay? Now, when my wife doesn't do what I need her to do, that's a failure to care, okay? So all this time I'm thinking she's not caring for me, the, the bad relationship is all her fault. Okay, so now I come to this class and I find out about this principle about a failure to protect. And I had no idea that this is the area, this is where the Lord showed me my error. So she fails to care for me, and then I come in and I attack her. That's a failure to protect. So in other words, she lit the match and I brought the gas. When my responsibility actually is she likes the match and I come in and my job is to blow it out. So that's what, I've, that's what we've learned how to do. So if you can able if you're able to manage the conflict right here on this level, it won't escalate to drama. Once it escalates to drama, that's when you invite these unclean spirits that we're going to talk about in just a minute. Right. Four Let's stages. Go ahead and, and, and get into it. So four stages. we're going to transfer into the four stages of drama. So I'm gonna read. Let me say this right quick. Okay. These four stages of drama, these scriptures right here, we've heard about all of our life. But I have found out, my wife and I have found out that they're the main corporate, the main reason, our lack of understanding and comprehension is, is the main reason, is the main thing that the enemy was using to attack our marriage. Mm -hmm. Wait, huh? So in Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, it reads, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So from there, uh, Pastor extrapolated the four stages 